Welcome inside Conservation Ag Update, brought to you by Saddle Butte Ag and Biotill Cover Crops. Noah Newman here, great to have you with us for another jam-packed show. We're going to kick things off in Arlington, Iowa, where a field day took place. It was co-hosted by the Iowa Agriculture, Water Alliance, and Iowa Corn Growers Association to recognize the 10th anniversary of the Iowa Nutrient Reduction Strategy. Making big decisions with precision. That was the theme at Tim Rector's farm as a no-tiller showcased one of his biggest precision tools, his nitrogen bar. Wrecker uses it to apply nitrogen with Y drops ahead of the corn planter. Tim, show us how it works. So I'm laying 24 gallons of liquid N, 12 on each side, um, and I'm putting a ribbon of 32% in this area. And then I come back with the planter, and the planter will plant the seeds right here. And so my, my concern is, in the old days when I was doing tillage, we were blanket spreading 32% across the top, so many 24 gallons, 30 gallons, and had to work it in. Since I don't do any tillage, I'm not incorporating nitrogen in, but laying a ribbon of concentrate on both sides with some stabilizers, with some uh, car, what I call car wash soap to get it into the ground quicker. And then with technology, you're able to plant right between that six inch ribbon. Wrecker's been no-tilling for about a decade. He says GPS technology is key to making that nitrogen application system work. Now let's check in with our friend McCain Vogel, who's standing by with today's Cover Crop Connection. Thanks, Noah. McCain Vogel here, Assistant Editor for Cover Crop Strategies. We sent out a survey to our readers about the different types of cover crop seeders they use on their farms. From standard air seeders to modified versions of classic seed drills, all the way to horse and buggy, here's a quick look at a few of the most unique and thought-provoking responses. Jeff Samuelson from Rose Valley Farm in Tipton, Iowa says, We use a John Deere 1790 31 by 15 inch planter with seed right seed discs for small grains. This gives us the chance to plant next year's corn between the cereal rye rows. We also have excellent population control, dropping around 40 to 45 pounds of seed per acre. If we head across the pond to Essex, England, Jamie Rankin of Little Hall Farms says, I use a weaving as this is a specialist direct drill for no-till farmers. We are pleased with the drill and the switch to no cultivations, which is working well so far. An important gain is that we have more time to do the job right as we are not under pressure to get on with cultivations and thus damage our soils. And we promised horse and buggy, so let's head to Trout Run, Pennsylvania, where Eric Nordell of Beech Grove Farm says, we use this old pull type rotary hoe to incorporate broadcast cover crop seed. We often precede the rotary hoe with a spring tooth harrow, which was the case in this photo, planting a cover crop cocktail after no-till garlic. This combination seems to do a good job of incorporating the seed while keeping most of the residue near the soil surface and loosening the ground for good water infiltration. And you can see more responses in the upcoming Cover Crop Strategy special report, which will be featured in the July edition of No-Till Farmer magazine and in an article on CoverCropStrategies.com. Back to you, Noah. Thank you very much, McCain. Moving on, planting season is picking up steam. 65% of corn and 49% of soybeans in the ground, according to the May 14th USDA Crop Progress Report. But wet conditions tested the patience of some farmers in states like Michigan. That includes Tuscola County no-tiller Tom Hess, who was finally able to start planting last week. Tom's been no-tilling for almost 40 years. No-till helps slow erosion on his hilly farm and allows him to have a life, he says, taking a lot less time and equipment to get the job done. So Tom's big on cover crops. He plants a lot of different species like vetch, annual ryegrass, cereal rye, radish, to name just a few. And he uses this Henniker 12 row cover crop seeder while side dressing corn around V3, V5. So our goal is to keep it green, keep something pulling that sunlight and converting it into a uh... Feed, and feed for the biology down under our feet. So our goal is to keep the ground covered, as little soil disturbance as possible, and keep a living, live green, living root year round if we can. So with the mild winters, we're, we're normally keeping uh, something relatively green all winter. What, what's one of the keys to success when it comes to interseeding, to making interseeding really work? 
it's timely. It's a busy time of the year, so it, it takes some management. You need to have the seed, the planter, everything ready to go. As we all know, corn goes from six inches to six feet in about three weeks, it seems like. So you, you got to be uh, you got to be ready to go and, and cover the ground. So that's going to be one of the big challenges is the equipment availability and the manpower to run it. Had a lot of fun visiting with Tom this past week. All right, moving on. At the National No-Tillage Conference back in January, I talked with a farmer who uses a lot of precision technology, and I asked him what new technology or product would really take your operation to the next level. He said something that could make tissue sampling easier and quicker. This could be what he's looking for. Leaf Tech Ag recently debuted this handheld tissue analysis tool at Linko Precision's new technology meeting in Nokomis, Illinois, hosted by the one and only Skip Kleinfelter. The digital lab delivers nutrient content readings in less than three minutes. Leaf Tech founder John Masco says all you do is stick a leaf in the scanner bed and wait for the magic to happen. What this system does, it allows you to, to identify your farm field crop and then allows you to calibrate that at the scanner with that information. And then it allows you from there, you are able to, to capture the leaf non-destructively, to look at the nutrient, and we collect about a three by five inch area and allows you to take a look at that leaf, say, yep, I want it. And then you can go to your scan results where it pushes the, the data up to the cloud where you can look at that geolocated data and allows you to see the data for all the crop nutrients plus leaf water content. Leaf water content is important because it helps us determine uh, water stress on the plant and then also gives us all the metadata of where it was and how it was used. More ingenuity on display in our video of the week coming to us from Columbus, Wisconsin, where Jeff Gaska built his own strip-till rig. Check it out. He used an old 12-row cultivator as the main frame and transformed it into a strip-till machine. Some of the features include row cleaners, a single coulter for depth gauge and to cut through trash, a mole knife running about six inches deep to break up the soil, and two coulters in the back to build the mound for the strips. Optimus Prime has nothing on that. All right, have a video or photo you'd like to share? Shoot me an email at innewman at lespub.com. I'd love to hear from you. That'll wrap things up for this week's edition of Conservation Ag Update. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, for the latest headlines and stories, head to notillfarmer.com, striptillfarmer.com, and covercropstrategies.com. See you next time. Have a great day.